Hello and welcome to lecture 6 of module 2 of this course on accelerator physics. Today we will learn about traveling wave, Linux and periodic accelerating structures. So in the last lecture we learned about the modes in a uh, pillbox cavity and we saw that how they can be used for acceleration of charged particles. So they were standing waves. Today we will try to see whether using the uh, traveling wave in a waveguide we can accelerate the charged particles. So <clears throat> we saw yesterday that TE and TM MNP modes are excited in a pillbox cavity. The variations of the fields in the theta and z direction they have sinusoidal dependence whereas in the r direction the fields have vessel function type of variation. We also saw that TEMN zero mode cannot exist in a pillbox cavity because by boundary condition it, uh, the, this mode is not allowed. We also saw that in a good conductor the fields penetrate up to a distance equal to the skin depth and due to this uh, there is some RF surface resistance and power is dissipated on the cavity walls. In the TM010 mode in the pillbox cavity we have only the EZ field that is constant along the length of the cavity. So in the TM010 mode we have a field EZ field along the Z direction and the V theta field and these fields are varying with time. Both EZ and V theta are varying with time. So this EZ field since it has a time variation like this and we know how to accelerate using a small portion of this field. Uh, using the small portion of this field for acceleration, this EZ field can be used for acceleration. Drift tubes can be put inside this cavity. If you make a long uh, pillbox cavity, you can put drift tubes inside this and the resulting structure is known as the drift tube linac or the DTL and this can be used for acceleration of charged particles. Then the, we also studied about various uh, figure of merits of the cavity like the quality factor, shunt impedance. So the aim of the cavity design is to maximize the quality factor and shunt impedance. So today let us see whether we can use uh, traveling waves for acceleration. So we saw in the beginning that when electromagnetic waves propagate inside uh, conducting boundaries, so for example inside a waveguide, then there are two cases possible. Okay, the TM wave and the TE wave. In the TM wave, there is a component of electric field along the direction of propagation. Okay, so here we have E parallel to V. So it may be possible, so at that time we had discussed that it may be possible to use the TM waves in the, uh, inside the space bounded by conducting boundaries, for example, in a waveguide for acceleration. So let us see whether we can use this traveling wave for acceleration. So let us consider the uh, let us consider a lossless uniform waveguide. So this is a hollow uh, waveguide of circular cross section and uh, we've already studied the fields in this uh, structure. So here since the wave since there is no boundary in the z direction it is a propagating wave in the z direction with a propagation vector kg. So the electric field component ez for the TM mode, TM01 mode can be written like this. So here M is equal to 0. So uh, the theta component is equal to 1. So there is this cos M theta which has gone to 1. So we have EZ uh, written as EJ0KR and it is a propagating wave in the Z direction. So the wave propagates in the Z direction with a propagation constant KG which is given as under root of K0 square minus kc square okay so kg is 2 pi by lambda g where lambda is the wavelength of the propagating wave so originally the electromagnetic wave had a propagation constant k0 in free space when it entered the waveguide it is now propagating with a propagation constant kg in the direction in which boundaries are applied that is the r and theta it has formed a standing wave and uh, the uh, propagation constant so or the wave number of associated with this uh, standing wave is given by kc and uh, it is uh, given as k0 square minus kg square 
where kc is equal to 2 pi by lambda c so here lambda c is the cutoff wavelength of the waveguide which depends upon the transverse dimensions of the waveguide in this case the radius so we can write k0 square is equal to kc square plus kg square or in other words k0 square can be written as omega by c whole square so this wave propagates inside the waveguide with a propagation constant kg if kg is real that means k0 should be greater than kc now we define the phase velocity of the resultant wave so that is the velocity with which a particular phase appears to be moving so this is uh, the phase velocity is given by v phase is equal to omega by kg okay so um, uh, kg is the propagation constant in the waveguide now in real life if you see there are no truly monochromatic waves in nature so there is some variation in the uh, frequency of the waves uh, propagating in nature so a real wave exists in the form of a wave group which consists of superposition of waves of different frequencies and wave numbers so if the spread in the phase velocities of individual waves is small the envelope of the wave pattern will tend to maintain its shape as it moves with a velocity which is called the group velocity so let us see what is the phase velocity and group velocity for a group of waves so let's say we have two individual waves of uh, dif slightly different wave numbers and slightly different frequencies. So the first wave represented here has a wave number k1 and the second wave has a wave number k2. These are slightly different from each other. And the first wave has a frequency omega1 and the second wave has a frequency omega2. Again, these are slightly different from each other. The phase velocity of the first wave is given by omega 1 by k1 and the phase velocity of the second wave is given by omega 2 by k2. Both of these waves are propagating in the z direction. So the resultant wave uh, can be calculated by taking the superposition of the two waves. So, so we simply add up the two waves and uh, this is the net resultant that we get. So we see that here the exponential factor in this describes a traveling wave. Uh, with mean frequency, so the frequency now is omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 and a mean wave number. So the wave number is k1 plus k2 by 2 and the first factor represents a slowly varying modulation of the wave amplitude. So the wave amplitude is now modulated. So this is how the resultant wave looks like and it is again propagating in the z direction. It is now propagating as a wave group. So this is the addition of the two waves and this is what we get and uh, so now we can calculate the phase velocity of the resultant wave. So we see that the phase velocity is given by omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 divided by k1 plus k2 by 2. So it is now omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by k1 plus k2. So average of uh, the frequency divided by the average of the wave number. Uh, the group velocity is defined as the velocity of the amplitude modulation envelope. So this is defined as the velocity with which the wave packet or the wave group is moving. And uh, we can write this as, so this is coming from the uh, amplitude modulated part. So here the group velocity is omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by k1 minus k2. So which is d omega by dq. So the group velocity represents the velocity of the whole uh, wave packet or wave group whereas the phase velocity represents the velocity of a phase. So it is the apparent velocity with which the, the phase of any uh, uh, part of the wave appears to be moving along in the z direction. Now in general the uh, main phase velocity and the group velocity are not necessarily equal. Okay, let us see for a monochromatic plane wave. So as you know electromagnetic wave in free space is uh, if you take a single wave it's like a monochromatic plane wave. Now uh, you can take the dispersion diagram or a Brillouin diagram. So that is a graphic relationship between omega and k. For a monochromatic plane wave uh, you know that omega is equal to ck. So it's a, uh, it's an, it's a wave that is propagating with propagation constant k frequency omega with velocity c and uh, the equation uh, the equation of the wave is given like this which you are very familiar now 
okay so uh, if you draw this omega versus k you see that it is a straight line which represents the velocity c with, with which it is moving so here in this case the phase velocity is simply omega by k which is equal to c if you calculate the group velocity it is del omega by del k which is also equal to c so in this case the phase velocity is equal to the group velocity is equal to c <coughs> now let's see the dispersion diagram for a hollow wave guide now the relation between the frequency and wave number for wave motion inside a uniform hollow wave guide is given by this expression so omega is equal to c under root kc square plus kg square so you know that for uh, a wave guide any frequency below the cutoff frequency so this is the cutoff frequency any frequency below the cutoff frequency is attenuated and any frequency that is above the uh, cutoff frequency will be propagated so uh, above the cutoff frequency you can choose any frequency here it will propagate it will propagate with a propagation constant kg corresponding to this so this curve has been drawn from this expression so we see that for omega is equal to omega c the propagation constant goes kg goes to zero so you can calculate from here for omega equal to omega c the propagation constant goes to zero and the phase velocity becomes infinite so there is no propagation of waves for omega less than omega c the wave propagates through the hollow wave guide only for omega greater than or equal to omega c for each value of frequency there is a certain phase velocity and group velocity so let's say the let's take a frequency here so there is a corresponding to this point on the curve there is a phase velocity and a group velocity what is the phase velocity the phase velocity as you know it's omega by k so it is the so base phase velocity at any point on the curve it is the slope of the line from the origin to that point so at this point so for this frequency at this point you take a line from the origin to this point the phase velocity is defined as the slope of this line okay what what about the group velocity the group velocity is given by the slope of the dispersion curve at that point so the slope of the curve at this point this gives you the group velocity so in this way from the dispersion diagram you can calculate the phase velocity and group velocity these dotted lines uh, show for omega is equal to kg c so this the slope of this line is c so in general you can make out from this figure here that the phase velocity is greater than c whereas the group velocity is less than c now again the relation between the frequency and wave number is given by this you can from here you can calculate the phase velocity so phase velocity is omega by kg uh, we take kg because kg is the propagation constant or the pro propagation vector with which the wave is propagating in the wave guide so omega by kg is you simply uh, you, you can take omega from here and divide it by kg so you can uh, take kg out of the under root and uh, so it will get cancelled with this kg so you are left with c under root 1 plus kc plus K, kc by kg the whole square now this quantity is greater than 1 okay so here if you see c into some quantity greater than 1 so this number or this value whatever it comes out will be greater than c so the phase velocity is greater than c which we can also save c from here this slope corresponds to c if you see the phase velocity here it is greater than the value of c okay so wave propagates in this empty waveguide with a phase velocity greater than the velocity of light now however uh, it does not violate any laws of physics because this is the phase velocity is the apparent velocity with which a phase of uh, the wave appears to be moving it does not carry any energy the uh, energy is carried by the uh, group velocity so it is not violating any laws of physics however it is not possible to accelerate a charged particle with this wave because the particle velocity is always lower than the velocity of light now you know that no particle can move with a velocity greater than the velocity of light okay so the particle velocity will always be less than the velocity of light and 
द फेज वेलासिटी इज ग्रेटर दैन द वेलासिटी ऑफ लाइट ओके सो पार्टिकल वेलासिटी इज नाउ लेस दैन द फेज वेलासिटी नाउ वाइल एक्सेलरेटिंग द चार्ज पार्टिकल हैज टू सी द सेम फेज एट ऑल टाइम्स ओनली देन इट विल गेट एक्सेलरेटेड ओके सो हियर इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सिंस द पार्टिकल वेलासिटी इज लेस दैन द फेज वेलासिटी इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर टू सिंक्रोनाइज इट विद द वेव so synchronism between wave and particle that is necessary for particle acceleration does not occur so you cannot accelerate using the waves in a hollow wave guide because the phase velocity of the wave in the, uh, in the wave guide is greater than the velocity of light okay so even though there is a tm mode there is uh, an electric field along the direction of the uh, charge particles it is not possible to accelerate using a hollow wave guide now let's calculate the group velocity in a wave guide so the group velocity is given by del omega by del kg so we take uh, we differentiate omega with respect to kg from here and we get c divided by under root of 1 plus kc square by kg square now this number is greater than 1 so you divide c by a number greater than 1 so this will come out to be less than c okay so energy propagates along the wave guide with group velocity so no uh, laws of physics are violated so that's for a uniform wave guide if you see phase velocity and group velocity if multiply the two of them you get equal to c square where the group velocity is less than the velocity of light and phase velocity is greater than the velocity of light so you can also see from here for this value of omega okay so the phase velocity is given by the slope of this line whereas the group velocity is given by the slope of the curve at that point so you can see here the phase velocity is always greater than c whereas the group velocity is always less than c the group velocity rather than the phase velocity is used to characterize the motion of the wave packet so we have just seen in a hollow uniform wave guide the phase velocity of the wave is always greater than the velocity of light hence the uniform wave guide is not suitable for synchronous acceleration so we need to modify the structure to slow down the phase velocity if we could slow down or if we could bring the phase velocity less than the velocity of light or to match it to the velocity of the charged particles then we can use Uh, a wave guide for acceleration so what is the solution we load the uniform wave guide periodically with obstacles so this is the wave guide and now you have loaded it with periodic obstacles so these are uh, conducting plates and at periodic intervals l so there is a hole for the beam to pass through this is known as a disc loaded wave guide so the wave guide is loaded periodically with metal disks with period length l okay as you can see here so these are metal disks and uh, they are separated by some uniform distance l so this here l is known as the cell length and there is an aperture here for the beam to pass through now loading the uniform wave guide periodically and thus converting it into a periodic structure we expect that the field distribution will get perturbed by introducing a z periodic modulation of the amplitude of the wave okay so giving the tm01 propagating wave solution of the form like this so your because now you have loaded the wave guide with uh, periodic uh, metal disks so now your electric field in the z direction will also get modified so your amplitude has now got modified okay now from floquet's theorem which is also analogous to bloch's theorem in solid state phys uh, physics it states that in a given mode so in this case we are talking of let's say tm01 mode in this cavity in a given mode of an infinite periodic structure so we have a structure now that is periodic the field differs from one period to the next only by a constant factor so that means if you if you take the field at this point and you take the field at this point okay and they are separated by l so the field at the two points will differ only by your constant factor which is in general a complex number or a phase term okay so ez at z plus l so at 
z plus l so the value of the electric field in the z direction at z plus l is same as at z except for an additional factor constant factor which is complex here the sign depends upon the direction of propagation so now this term ai it has to be periodic and it can be developed into fourier series okay so you can write ai which is a function of r and z as summation uh, from n is equal to minus infinity to infinity a i n r e to the power of 2 pi n z by l okay and then if you substitute this in the expression for the electric field this is what you get so here n will take values from minus infinity to infinity so n is an integer so now you see that this wave it has n space harmonics okay n can take values uh, different integral values so it has uh, uh, there will be n space harmonics here okay and the uh, propagation the propagation constant for each space harmonic is given by this value okay so you can write kn which is the propagation constant for the nth space or harmonic as kg plus 2 pi n by l for n is equal to 0 k0 is equal to kg okay so the phase velocity of the nth space harmonic will now be given by omega by kn so you can write omega divided by kn from here okay so now uh, you divide the numerator and denominator by kg you get omega by kg which is the phase velocity in a hollow waveguide uniform hollow waveguide so here you get omega by kg and here you get 1 plus 2 pi n by kg l okay so this is a number which is greater than 1 so this will be less than the phase velocity okay because the phase velocity is omega kg where we v phase is the phase velocity of the hollow waveguide okay so now you have by loading this uh, with periodic obstacles with metal discs you have been able to reduce the phase velocity as compared to the phase velocity in a hollow waveguide okay and now you can choose your n sufficiently large okay and then you will uh, you can reduce the phase velocity of the nth space harmonic so by choosing n sufficiently large we can obtain an arbitrary low phase velocity so we get a slow wave which can be used for particle acceleration so you have slowed down the velocity uh, the phase velocity of the traveling wave now and using that you can now synchronize it with the charge particle and use it for acceleration of the charge particle so now if you plot the uh, dispersion curve for a periodically loaded structure this is what you get so this is for n is equal to 0 uh, this is for n is equal to 1 and so on okay uh, so here you notice that earlier when there was no uh, earlier when there was no uh, loading the dispersion curve was something like this okay now you see that here it is taking a turn so frequencies above this frequency is not allowed so there was one cutoff frequency here and now there is another frequency here above which the uh, wave is not allowed okay so the waves now will propagate in only a narrow band of frequency which is known as the pass band okay so the above equation represents an infinite number of traveling waves which are known as space harmonics. So each of these waves are known as space harmonics and each of them are denoted by the index n. The traveling wave inside the periodically loaded waveguide is uh, sum of all the spatial harmonics. The principal wave is given by n is equal to 0 each harmonic has a propagation constant kn so there is a propagation constant kn associated with each so with each of the harmonics so you can put in the values of n is equal to 0 1 2 so on and you will get the value of propagation constant and it has a phase velocity and a group velocity now at a given frequency let's say you choose this frequency okay all space harmonics so at this frequency n is equal to n is equal to 1 corresponds to this value of k 
sorry n is equal to 0 corresponds to this value of k n is equal to 1 corresponds to this value of k and so on <clears throat> now if you see their phase velocity the phase velocity of the uh, principal wave is the slope of this curve the phase velocity of n is equal to 1 is the slope of this uh, this line okay so each of them has a different phase velocity however if you see the group velocity group velocity is simply the slope of this curve at this point so the group velocity remains the same however the phase velocity varies so at a given frequency all space harmonics have the same group velocity so they have the same group velocity and they have different phase velocities so they have different phase velocities <coughs> So space harmonics have same frequency but different wave numbers and each has a constant amplitude E n which is independent of z. The waves for n greater than 0 they travel in the positive z direction and those for n less than 0 travel in the negative z direction. So uh, this is n greater than 0 these are traveling in the forward direction these are traveling in the reverse direction. The number, the wave number of the nth space harmonic is shifted from the wave number k0 of the principal wave by 2 pi n by l. So you can see here the uh, wave number of uh, each harmonic is shifted from the wave number of the principal harmonic by 2 pi n by l. The phase velocity for the nth space harmonic is given by omega by kn which is omega by kg divided by 1 plus 2 pi n by k, uh, kg l. So by choosing n sufficiently large one can obtain an arbitrarily low phase velocity to synchronize it with the velocity of the charged particles. The resultant group velocity for the principal wave at a given frequency is obtained from the slope of the dispersion curve. So now we have seen that the addition of the disks inside the cylindrical waveguide spaced by a distance uh, L, it induces multiple reflections between the disks and this causes a change in the dispersion curve. So waves now propagate in li uh, limited frequency interval. So we have seen that uh, this wave is now propagating in a limited frequency interval. Okay, Earlier it was propagating this uh, for this particular mode, let's say TM01 mode, it was propagating there was no cutoff in the upper direction but now we see that there is a stop band so ab uh, above a certain frequency again the waves do not propagate so these intervals are known as pass bands the group velocity is equal to zero at the end of pass band and uh, at omega zero and omega so here if you see the group velocity the group velocity is the slope of this curve so at the end of the pass bands at this location and this location the group velocity is equal to 0 and it is maximum at the center here. At low frequencies there is normally no wave propagation between two adjacent pass bands we have a stop band. So uh, this is mode 1 let's say this is TM01 mode this is TM uh, next mode. So the two modes are now separated by a pass band. <coughs> 